enjoy everything we need in the, the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Tonight, I want to go back to uh, 1 Kings 13. We were here on Sunday morning with the, uh, the, the prophet and uh, the, the man of God there in 1 Kings 13. We, we kind of talked about on Sunday morning how did this, uh, um, how, did, how does a powerful preacher become a carcass cast in the way? We kind of marked his, uh, the, the path downward from the, the victory there at the altar where the king's hand is, is uh, dried up and he could not bring it to him again. Uh, but then uh, we, we kind of get toward the end there and he is a carcass cast in the way, the Bible says. And, and the Bible uses the word carcass <laughs> several times. And it seems like a disrespectful word, you know, just the, and the body. I, I, if we're having a, a funeral in here, you know, we wouldn't, uh, and we, and the carcass down here, in just a little bit we'll be following the carcass to the graveside. You know, that, that's, it's kind of a, that's not a term that we would use at a, at a funeral, and the Bible keeps using that, that term here. Um, and, of course, uh, I, if, if you remember the first time you came across this story, boy, your heart goes out to the guy because, oh, that old prophet, he's the one that should have been in trouble. He's the one that lied to the man of God. He was the liar, and he was the one that should have gotten in trouble, and he seems to go on with life, and then the guy that was lied to is dead on the ground. Uh, so if you don't know the story, we'll tell you the story real quick. Uh, Sunday morning we preached on it, but God called a man from uh, the southern king to, to go up and preach against the false worship system up there. And so he's, he's, a, he's I'm sure, frightened. He's going to preach against the worship system up there. He begins preaching against the altar, and, uh, at the, and he makes some prophecy about what's going to go on there with King Josiah eventually. And King Jeroboam, he doesn't like being preached again. So the king says, seize him. His arm dries up. And that's pretty exciting. And then all of a sudden from seize him to please pray for my arm that it can be restored. And everything seems like, yay, everything's going good. The people up there are going to wake up and see their need to follow God. But by the end of the chapter, he is dead. And the Bible says right at the end, that Jeroboam decided to go right back to uh, the, you know, ordaining people to the ministry. They had no business being in the ministry and having this false worship system. And so I, I, I've just continued chewing on this. And of course, uh, Kate, my, my daughter, she's like, but he was lied to. <laughs> he was lied to. I don't get it. Um, how can he be the one in trouble when he was lied to? So that's what I want to talk about tonight because whether you realize it or not, every day we're being lied to. Every day we're being lied to. Um, and we'll go through some of the ways. Our own heart lies to us. Our own heart. And then what if I'm lied to? How, how, how can I be delivered from deception? How can I be delivered from deception? Boy, if I'm helpless before lies like this man may seem to be when you first get into the passage, what am I to do? But I've, I've got good news. We aren't helpless before the lies in our life. So I just want to look at this, uh, um, this passage and look at this, uh, this, this old prophet and he lied unto him and just a few things that we can do to make sure we're not helpless before the lies that surround us. We are surrounded by lies down here. It will be so good someday when no longer are we surrounded by lies ever again. Uh, but until then, we need help. Uh, how can I be delivered from deceit? All right, so let's, let's, we're in 1 Kings 13. We'll go to verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they also told unto his father. And their father said unto them, Which way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went. 
which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And again, we brought this up Sunday morning that, oh, if only he had been so focused on obedience that the old prophet could not catch up to him. And again, young people, I just want to remind you that delayed obedience is disobedience. And then that's actually good for older people too, isn't it? Because sometimes we're kind of slow to get to what we're supposed to be doing. Found him sitting under an oak and said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. Uh, for it was said to me by the word of the Lord that thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way thou camest. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. So this is kind of interesting. We have a man that comes up and says, I'm just like you. You can trust me. I'm just like you. You can trust me. So that, again, there's a warning here. Um, I am a prophet as thou art, uh, also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. It came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the, the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commandeth thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and, and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. Behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city, where the old prophet dwelt. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us with this question, how can I be delivered from deceit when there are lies all around me? Let's pray. Lord, I just pray that you be with this, uh, this message. Thank you, Lord, for the, the good news, Lord, this man that called in today. I, 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 want to, I, want, I need to get back to God. Oh, what a blessing, Lord, that stirs our hearts. Thank you, Lord. This little fourth grade girl who got saved on Sunday. Uh, Lord, I, I, uh, there's others that, that are on, on the verge of, of getting saved. And, and Lord, they're just, it's such a, a blessing. We heard this report. Annette's heart is stirred. Uh, this life is but a vapor, and she wants to be busy using this life for you, oh God. That's a blessing. Thank you. Now, Lord, we are surrounded by lies down here, but you don't leave us helpless. So I pray that as we look at this passage, you'd help us to know how we won't be helpless before deceit, but we can be delivered from deceit. And I pray that you just bless this message. I say things in Christ's name, amen. <laughs> All right, so uh, just we'll, we'll, we'll kind of unpack it this way. We see him listening to a lie. And lies are kind of uh, intriguing. Uh, the Bible warns about the flatterer. And a flatterer, will, will, he's dishonest in the nice things he says about you, right? Oh, we, we hear about the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Uh, so a lie often is intriguing. It plays on our pride. A lie might play on our fear. Lies get our attention. and They draw us in in a unique way. So we, here we see the man listening to a lie. And then the more he listened, uh, I don't know what's all going on in his mind, but he's thinking, I, you, you want, an angel said I could eat, and of course we love food, don't we? Seems like food in the Bible gets us in trouble. There was Eve at the Garden of Eden, right? There he was, like, uh, there was the devil with Eve. He's like, doesn't it look tasty? You're like, <laughs> food. Uh, he tempted Jesus with food, didn't he? In, in Matthew chapter four, and here <laughs> the false prophet says, there's scrumptious delights at my house, 
And an angel has, has said, it's, oh boy, he's starting to like the idea of sitting down with this prophet. Um, I'm going to be legendary in this place, right? And he really was. We're still talking about him to this very day. Only different than he was uh, suspecting at that time. He listened to the lie and then he fell in love with the lie. And then pretty soon, uh, the, the, what he was supposed to do for, the, for God, he, he, he changed all that to give himself over to living out this lie. Uh, so he changed to do what this person told him uh, he should do, and he lied to him. So he listened to a lie. He liked the lie. He fell in love with it, and then he lived out this lie. And then you and I, and of course we would say, but he was lied to. It can't be his fault. <laughs> our heart goes out to him. And then our heart would go out to ourselves, right? That's the danger, um, our heart goes out to me because I was lied to and I didn't know any better and so I gave in and did you really not know any better? Uh, who is your heart going out to tonight as far as sin is concerned? All right, so uh, he was listening to a lie. Uh, but, but did he know it was a lie? Uh, does your mind go to uh, Joshua chapter 9? There was Joshua Remember Joshua when the Gibeonites came and they, uh, they said, it was after the defeat of Jericho and after the defeat of Ai, the Gibeonites dressed up like they, were, they had traveled a long, 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 long way and found this moldy food and old bottles to put wine into and, and showed up and said, we're from way far away and we've come to, to, to make a covenant with you, uh, to make peace with you. And, and again, uh, he he was completely taken in uh, uh, with, with this. Uh, but the, the point is, the, the, the lesson we learned from that is, boy, Joshua, you got to go to the Lord. You got to go to the Lord on a regular basis. You got to go to the Lord. Uh, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So, uh, but this man of God, he should have suspected something even more. God had made very clear to him what he was supposed to do. And this backslidden prophet comes to him with updated information. <laughs> this guy that's up here near the false worship and content to be near the false worship and quiet about it comes with updated information. And you'd say, oh, but, but uh, are you sure he was backslidden? Uh, maybe, maybe, he, maybe he preached a little bit. Maybe this and that. Something should have seemed off about it, enough to the point where if my heart is intrigued by what he's saying, and it's different than what God said, and it's different than what God said, and it's different than what God said, I better go to the Lord. Amen. There's going to come a time where somebody's going to tell you something that's different from what God said, and they're going to make it seem real palatable, and you're going to want to be taken in by the lie. We like to be lied to. Because then I can do what I want to do and blame somebody else. We're sinners. We like to be lied to. Where do lies come from? Well, we, we know in, in John 8, 44, that the devil, he's the father of lies. Um, there in, in 1 John, I'm going to turn over there. In 1 John, we have all these different areas where, where lies are coming at us. Uh, in 1 John 2, 15 through 17, these areas in our life that are lying to us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life are not of the Father, but are of the world. The world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The world is lying to you. Your flesh, your own heart is lying to you. The devil, he's lying to you. Boy, these, this, the, 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 here, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, boy, that's the desire to do things that you shouldn't be doing. It's the desire to have things that you know God doesn't want you to have. It's the desire to be something, just like the devil wanted to be something greater than he was. He wanted to be like the Most High God, and that's in us. The desire to be and to do and to have those things that God does not want us to be and to do and to have. Oh, but if somebody lies to me, then I can do those things and I can blame it on someone else. 
We like to be lied to. The world lies to us. I think of television and movies. I do uh, like a a good movie here and there, Uh, sometimes a TV show here and there, but never a steady diet of it. It's an alternate reality. It's It's a place of fiction. For one thing, I don't want to live my life watching someone to pretend to live a life. I've got better things to do with my life than to spend and waste my life watching somebody pretend to live one. I want to live my life not watch somebody pretend like they have it all together when they're only reciting lines that somebody wrote for them. The Bible says in Romans 16, 19, I want to be uh, wise concerning that which is good and simple concerning that which is evil. Boy, you, teenager, you feel so backwards if you haven't seen the latest movie. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be a badge of honor for you to say, oh, I, that's another one I haven't seen. That's another one I haven't seen. Simple concerning that which is evil, wise concerning that which is good. Um, I remember years ago on, on the Hobart bus route, um, this, this one bus mom, she goes, I, I won't be there at church tomorrow. Um, the, uh, and she was going to move heaven and earth. The, the kids were going to be here. They were going to do this. She got this job covered, and she had transportation because she needed to see, I think, the third installment in the Twilight series. Years ago, with, with and, and, and she, I'm asking her, what is the Twilight series? And she's like, oh, pff, it's, it's only the most amazing story ever. You got the, the, the vampires and the werewolves and, this, the, and then the girl that's caught in between because she loves. And I'm like, wow. And, and I'm telling you, she, she had moved heaven and earth. When she told me all that she did and what it was going to cost her to go watch, I'm like, you know, I, I know you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm buying your kids Christmas presents. Um, you don't have a lot. But, but the sacrifice she would make and all that she would go to to watch that. And again, as, as she's saying it out loud, I'm like, I can't believe that she's willing to say all of this out loud to another adult and be excited about it. But it's this alternate reality that we would prefer. I don't like the reality God has me in. I'd like to sneak off to some fairy tale land. It's not healthy. Be wise concerning that which is good. Young person, it should be a badge of, I I have no idea what that's about. Um, Boy, but you know, I heard a good sermon. Boy, I read a good autobiography of, of this missionary. Hey, I'm excited about this. Sure, enjoy. And, and, but, but just every, every once in a while, uh, hey, is, is it a good move? Can I enjoy that? But here and there. But I fear that there's a lot of the Bible you've never studied, but you're up to date on the latest movie, the latest TV show. And that, that, that's, that's the world lying to you. That world, uh, the the things that concern the characters on TV aren't the things that concern God. The things that concern God aren't the things that concern the characters on that TV show. And if the things do concern God, you find it's a thing of humor, a thing of mockery. I don't want to sneak, I I don't want that part of the world, but boy, we like to be lied to. We'll listen to those lies. And we'll fall in love with those lies and then we'll start living out those lies. Um, I think think of uh, social media, this alternate reality that we can can step into. And and it seems like what's right and wrong in real life isn't in in this world of social media. I'm convinced that Christians are so... Uh, like happy and follow happy in this country of ours that if, if it were possible for Israel on the bottom of Sinai when they're down there with that lewd party where people are not dressed and it's a rock and roll fest and, and they're worshiping the golden calves if they were able to post those things I think there's a lot of Christians 
in this country of ours that would like and follow. I'm a Christian. I, I, encourage, I like to be encouraging. But God was angry about what was going on. And some of the things that God is angry about in this alternate reality that's lying to you. It's a place you can sneak off to. And, and God has to be honored in this reality. But that's a different reality where God does not have to be honored. It's a lie. There should be no place where God is not honored. Psalm 119, 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Oh, Christian, don't like anything that's ungodly. Don't follow anything that's ungodly. God should be honored in every area of your life. When the Bible says that Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom, what it's saying is he pitched his heart towards Sodom. In the Old Testament language, he had liked and followed Sodom. And he watched it from a distance. And soon he was living out the lie that that's what's intriguing. His life was pitched toward this world. Abraham is a great hero of the faith because his heart was pitched toward a city whose builder and maker was God and Lot's heart was pitched down below. Oh, my friend, we're surrounded by lies, but it doesn't have to be that they take us in. We are not helpless before those lies. Through the years, I've heard of godly men and ladies going to young people. Hey, that doesn't seem right to like that. Hey, it doesn't seem right to follow that. And some will listen and they're better for it. And others will say, leave me alone. And over time, we've seen them living the lies. Oh, but it's not their fault, is it? They were lied to. My friend, we're surrounded by lies, and you know that. The world lies to us. Our own flesh lies to us. Your heart is a liar. Your heart will lie to you. Jeremiah 17, 9, right? The heart is wicked, desperately wicked, deceitful. It lies to us. Boy, the, uh, I was talking to the the Shrocks, e Eli, uh, and Christopher brought this up in speech class. <laughs> Boy, and it, it hurt when he told this story. He told the story of this, this woman in Cambodia who had a child, and the child had a, a pretty major deformity. And the good news was that can be corrected. You can take that child to the doctor, and that can be corrected. Yay! Yay! And the mother looked at them like they had three heads and said, are you kidding? If I get this corrected, I can't use this child to beg. Let that sink in. I can't use this child to beg if this deformity is corrected. And I thought about a lot of Christians. Oh, I, I know, we get hurt. I'm not taking that away from you. Things happen, and we do get genuinely hurt in this life. I believe it. I know it. I'm not taking that away from you. We get genuinely hurt. But then you come to church, and you find out that can be corrected. It's God's will to help you pass that. And God is powerful enough to help you pass that. And you look at the preacher like he has three heads and says, if I let God give me victory here, I can't use it to maintain victim status. I can't flounder in this life and blame somebody else for it. Why does that make sense? Because your heart is lying to you. I know we get genuinely hurt in this life. But God, it's his will to help you with it. And he's big enough to do it. Won't you let him? Our heart is lying to us. But we don't, we're not helpless before the liars in this world. Uh, I think of the, the worldly music you say, well, somebody explained to me that it's fine. 
when you know it isn't fine. We're, we're going to be talking more about that this summer. But I, my, when my kids were little, boy, and, you, and the radio station would be on and something would start playing, and my little kids would have that sensitivity, oh, Dad, oh, Dad, that's bad. That's bad, right, Dad, right, that's oh. <laughs> and you're like, yes. <laughs> it's just a commercial or something. But you know that sensitivity that you used to have? Boy, cultivate that sensitivity in your life. Boy, I listen to everything now. Boy, I, and, and, and again, my, my kids, the, 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 the trick shot guys, right? The, the dude perfect guys. And, and you, you find you're, you're, you're watching some of those. And, and then at first you're like, oh, I'll, Dad, I'll be careful to turn down that music. It's supposed to be clean family, family stuff, and, and a lot of what they do, it's, it is. It's like, you're like, wow, but they have music on there. That music is worldly. And at first, boy, you're like, oh, Dad, did I forget to turn it down? Did I forget? Why? Why do we forget to turn it down? Because it lies to us. Maybe it's not so bad at, over time. Oh, cultivate that sensitivity. The devil, he's another liar, isn't he? And what was the first lie he came down here to tell us? There he was with Eve at the tree, and he started to tell her, your authority is not qualified. Your authority is not qualified. He's a hypocrite. He's not here for your good. And he was, the devil was talking about God, wasn't he? One of the very first lies the devil came to tell a human being was, sure, follow your authority, unless they're disqualified. And he was able to disqualify God, in her mind. Children, that's how the devil, he can lie. He can disqualify your parents. Absolutely, follow mom and dad, uh, unless, you know, they're, they've lost. They're not qualified anymore. When you have that wrong heart, you'll disqualify any and every authority that's in your life. And it started with God himself. Eve decided he wasn't qualified to lead her anymore. And so she ate of the fruit that she was not supposed to eat of. And that's why people, and then Adam followed. And that's why death passed upon all men. The devil's going to come to you and say, I would get right with God, but the pastors here at Fairhaven are, are fake. My mom and dad are fake. Can I tell you, I am not perfect, but I am not fake. I am not fake. I take this seriously, and I work with a staff, and they are not fake. They love the Lord. They're genuine, and you're not going to come and get the help you need because the devil has disqualified all the authority in your life. Mom, dad, everybody. It's a lie. But you don't have to be taken in by the devil's lies. Boy, he was listening to the lie. And then he, got to, he started taking a liking to that lie. The more you listen to the lie, the more you start to like how it sounds. Food relaxation, a chance to tell my story to this older prophet. I'm going to be a legend around here. And by the way, Brother Rose did point out that uh, later on in, in 2 Kings 23, when Josiah is there, there the, the prophecy is fulfilled, and he says, what's that over there? And, and the sepulcher of the man of God was there that cried against the altar. So he actually did get some honor later on for crying out. God was merciful even in his disobedience. Um, but... In the, in the man of God's disobedience. But uh, with, when you start to listen to the lies that are around you, we start to liking them because I can do what I prefer and I won't get in trouble because after all, I was, I was taken in. I can turn from what God wants to what I want and I can blame somebody else for it. I like the sound of that. And sure, I, some of us would say, I'm not going to do wrong unless I can explain that I was deceived and it wasn't my fault. Then I'll, then I'll consider it. 
Boy, that's one of those things the devil is good at. I like um, there in Nehemiah when the enemy started coming and, and said, Nehemiah, come down. We've got some things to say to you. And Nehemiah there in, in chapter 6, verse 3, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Here's my helpful hint for you. <laughs> my, in my family, we're trying to, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There are the things we should be doing in this life and there are the things we could be doing in this life. In the morning, I try to tell my kids, it's summertime, right? It's summertime. Make sure you get the things you should be doing done. And then if there's time, you can do the things you could be doing. Like don't have good intentions about doing what you should be doing and do all the things you could be doing. Go and lounge and relax and take a nap, but you've never picked up your Bible to spend time with God. You'll find in this life that if you have the Matthew 6.33 life where the things I should be doing come first and if there's time, the things I could be possibly afterwards. God comes first and you'll find that if it's not backwards, far too often we live, we do the things we could be doing with the intention to get to the things we should be doing and often we never have time. Boy, you get yourself in a lot of trouble when you live that life. You're way more susceptible to the lies when you're busy doing the things you should be doing. Boy, what if Eve had been down with the trees, uh, near the trees that God had given them to, to, to take care of, and she was uh, enjoying those trees, and she says, no, I, I'm excited about serving God. I, I don't have time to go over there by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and have a conversation with the devil. The should-be life can protect you from the dangers that can happen during the could-be life. How many times do we wake up on a Sunday morning and you might turn on the radio for a little bit and say, yep, there was a shooting last night or actually this morning at 3 a.m. in in a bar somewhere. (laughs) And you're like, oh, man, I I don't like hearing about people get shot, but... Lord, thank you that I have better places to be on a Sunday morning at 3 a.m. than at a bar. And I wasn't shot. I was resting up because I wanted to come in and get my bus ready, go out and pick people up for for church. I wanted to get here and get my Sunday school class ready. I wanted to get here and get my junior church ready. I wanted to get here in plenty of time to pray. I wanted to sleep through the night so I was alert when the Bible was preached. Boy, that that should do life. It's just as simple as Matthew 6, 33. Ask, Lord, what should I be doing now? And help me to enjoy it. Be busy about the things you should be doing and you'll find it protects you from a lot of the lies that are coming at you from every single direction. Boy, so he, he was listening to the lie and then he was falling in love with the lie. I like the sound of that and then pretty soon he wasn't doing what he was supposed to He was with the old prophet, and then pretty soon he's dead. So he is listening to the lie, loving that lie, and then living out the lie that at first he was only listening to. Boy, I imagine every human being knows that there's a God. God builds that into us. What's going through the mind of the evolutionist? The evolutionist that says, uh, ooh, <laughs> um, someday, you know, if I stand before God, <laughs> I'll just explain to him, oh, you really do exist. You see, they told me you didn't. Uh, you see, I, I was lied to. They told me you didn't, so consequentially, I, I went through life as though you didn't exist, living whatever life suited my fancy. Boy, pleasantly surprised that you actually do exist. Wow. Oh, it's not going to go well, is it? Depart, ye cursed. Matthew 25, 41. Christian, you say, boy, my heart goes out to that that man of God because he was lied to. Well, you know, I think our our heart goes out to us, doesn't it? I kind of kind of want to be able to be taken in some because I like the sound of some of those lies. Oh, friend, don't play games with God. 
Don't play games. This, I was taken in. Don't let the world lie to you in these areas. Don't let your heart lie to you. God can help you with those hurts. He wants to help you. It's his will. So for you to hold on to that hurt and say, oh, there's no help for me. You're outside of the will of God when you live that life. It's his will to help you. He's big enough to do it and he wants to. Don't let your heart lie to you. All the liars, the devil, the, your own heart, this world around us. And, and those people that will come up to you and say, I'm just like you, only different in some unique ways. Maybe you don't have to be as sold out to the things of God. Boy, the lies that surround us, the sweet nothings that we like to hear, but oh God, protect us from those things. Would you uh, close your eyes and bow your heads? Boy, tonight we talked about deliverance from deceit. And it's a good topic because we are surrounded by lies.